Yo, Nopal, what are you doing here? You wouldn't understand. I'm gay. Remember a time when anything you posted on YouTube was fair game? And if you're under the age of 16, then you probably don't even believe me. But trust me, back in the day, there's almost zero restrictions on what you could post. Content was fun, humor was pushed to its limits, and YouTubers, well, they actually felt like YouTubers instead of whatever this is. Nowhere to hide from a bounty hunter. This is America's tallest man. Holding a secret apple. Today, we'll honor the legacy of edgy YouTube and all the creators that made it feel special. So without further ado, let's jump right into it. You know what? We're gonna take it old school with the transitions today. It's no secret that like half the platform copies Mr. Beast in 2024, but can you really blame them? Yes, yes you can, and I think you should blame them, because how it used to work was that creators were influenced by each other, and didn't just straight up copy someone else's hard work and dedication. You had iDubs with Content Cop, Filthy Frank with Pink Guy, Leafy with his CSGO commentary, and many other examples I'm not listing because it would make the video too long and hurt my audience retention rate. The point I'm trying to make is that that YouTubers actually had to be somewhat creative and couldn't just steal other people's ideas because rest assured if they tried, the entire internet would bully them off the platform. Like imagine all the Mr. Beast clones existing back in 2016. My goodness, it would have been a bloodbath. And that's not to say there wasn't any plagiarism back then, it was just much harder to do without serious backlash. Editing wise, videos were raw and felt hastily put together, focusing more on commentary, content, and structure of the video rather than prioritizing high level production. And man was the editing awesome. Yeah, it was no Hollywood, but it didn't have to be. And in my opinion, it was better, or and, you know, at least more fun to watch. Now that I've had 8 years to mature and grow as a person, many of the jokes back from edgy YouTube were immature, insensitive, and not funny. Nah, just kidding, they still have me dying of laughter. Although, to be fair, some of them were out of pocket. I think the biggest thing I was surprised by when looking back on edgy content is just the sheer genius that many creators were when telling jokes. Like seriously, it wasn't all racial slurs, and if you dig below the surface just a little bit, you will see jokes that factor in context, make good use of literary devices, and have killer punchlines. I will give you an example. Here is an edgy era joke compared with a modern day joke. I just had to do like a 10 minute briefing about all the different snakes that there are. There are six different kinds of snakes that are here and we are nowhere near any ambulance. So I'm a little scared if you can't tell. Don't subscribe to Scares. I know I'm months behind on this one, but subscribe to Scares when his content gets better. Scares is overweight. But more importantly than that, Scarce is boring. Veganism is, is, is not a bad thing. In fact, there are a lot of components in meat that give you cancer. And oh boy, I don't want no cancer. But here's a list of everything that gives you cancer. AKA living. Living gives you cancer. Whereas the modern day joke relies on shock value and trying to be different, the edgy era joke actually took effort and required creativity and charisma to work. And no hate to the jokes of modern YouTube, I get it. The audience likes it and it's good for the algorithm. But seriously, I am so sick and tired of the I actually know how to bury a dead body, ha ha ha, I'm so quirky type of joke. It's like we get it. You want attention. Sure, go ahead. Say that you're above YouTube drama, because one, you're just not, and two, if you were around in 2016, then you were for sure either consuming drama or creating your own drama. I mean, even I had drama on this platform back in 2016. I'm exposing toxic fudge, 48 subscriber beats. One day, Leafy would make a video on Keemstar, some days later, iDubbbz would make a video obliterating both of them, I mean, it was crazy. There's just no other way to say it. And mind you, that was just one small part of the entire drama machine operating that year. I mean, I didn't even mention the start of the Adpocalypse, Pokemon Go, Memegate, prank YouTubers faking their pranks, and just so much more. 
There was like a new drama every couple days and creators were constantly going at each other. Looking back, it was pretty toxic. But man, was it entertaining and it was always fun to support one creator and to just be on their team. If you were there for edgy YouTube, I hope this video acted as a trip down memory lane. If you missed out on edgy YouTube, I hope this video gave you some context on how YouTube used to operate. It's actually so interesting to see just how unrecognizable the platform is compared to only 8 years ago. But hey, that's just the internet I guess. Contrary to popular belief, I do think that modern YouTube has many good content creators, but unfortunately they are overshadowed by hyper commercialized Mr. Beast clones and the culture of modern YouTube. My goodness, it was awesome when creativity was flowing throughout the platform without corporate greed and censorship ruining much of what made it so special. And I'm not here to hate on YouTube, I'm just saying it how it is. So yes, we may never get back to that level of freedom and artistic exploration. But even if that's true, I'm glad we were able to at least relive it in this video, even if that were only for a few minutes. Look how beautiful this is. You see, thank you for watching my video, but it's time to go outside now. I mean, just look how beautiful this is. But I mean, if you're not gonna go outside, like just, just click on this video right here. Seriously though, you should go outside. It is gorgeous.